Hey everyone, it is Thrifted Thursday, but today we're doing something a little different. We are not doing a thrift haul. I am participated in the Thrift Flip Road Trip hosted by the Crafting Cousins. So we're gonna take some of the thrifted items that we got last week and we're gonna work on them for this video. So hang tight and let's get straight into these thrift flips. Let's hop right into this DIY or DIYs. Um, so we're going to start off with salt wash. I am going to take truffle by Waverly and I am going to mix it with our salt wash. Salt wash is an additive that is going to add texture to your paint and it doesn't have to be chalk paint. doesn't have to be DIY paint. It could be any paint you can mix with it. I do sell this on my website now. The link is in the description box and there is no real ratio. It is all going to depend on the look you are going for. The more salt wash you add, the more texture you're going to get. So start with a little bit and then work your way up. I love me some texture. So I am going to mix this. I just do it with my chippy brush. You can grab a fork. It doesn't matter. And it washes out of your brushes and your bowl very easily after I'm done you can see how thick it is I'm gonna take a glob of this stuff and at first I'm just going to kind of brush it on just so I could get really good underneath the details of the birds and after that then I'm gonna start stippling so stippling I'm like pouncing my brush up and down and that is going to create these little tiny peaks in our paint now if you wanted to if you were going for a different look you can leave those brush strokes there and once the salt page uh, salt wash and your paint harden up that's the texture that's the look you're gonna get so i am going more for a old stone look so i am going with the stippling effect i'm going to carry this all the way down the base of this i will say too usually when i work with glass i always spray it with clear matte by rust-oleum this time i wanted to see how the salt wash clung to it and so i didn't use any and I will say that it adhered to the glass with no issues whatsoever. And I did not have any flaking off like I usually would if I were to have added chalk paint to glass without clearing it first. All right. So once it is almost dry, I'm going to take the bristles of my brush and I'm going to go over it so that it kind of knocks down the peaks that I created when I stippled the paint when it was wet. You don't have to do this. Sometimes I don't, especially when I'm using it on wood signs. But in this case, I wanted to try it out. So I do the same thing for the candelabra too. <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that. But I got this on my last haul and it was, I think like $4.99, $3.99, but it looked cheap. It is like a light, light metal. It wasn't doing anything for me. And I wanted to bring this up a notch. I wanted to make this look high end. And I think I achieved that. So again, I'm stippling it on going a little lighter. Once I go towards the top where the metal is, because once I started putting it on there, I was like, this actually is giving it a rusted look. And I loved it. The texture of the salt wash made it look like it had like developed rust over time. Don't worry, I clean up the wax right there. It's okay. There we go. All right. So I am going to set these both aside to completely dry. I want, I set mine aside overnight just because I wanted these to really harden up. If you go in and start distressing or something before it is dry, you're going to take off all of that paint and salt wash. So Practice patience, something I do not do very often. Um, I am going to paint the bottom of this. I do not do it with the salt wash because I don't want texture on the bottom of this or else it's going to get lopsided. I am now going to get my Serenity Blue by Rust-Oleum and I am going to put it all over my piece. Now, again, there's you can do this different ways. You can dry brush over your salt wash and it's going to give you a different look i am going for full coverage on my second layer and then we are going to try out a different finishing 
technique, I guess you could say. And I do the same thing with the candelabra. So I'm not going to make you watch all of that once again, but I'm using my chippy brush as usual. And then I'm going to coat the entire thing. Um, I'm like, what do I do next? Okay. So here you go. See how on the bottom half, that's what like dry brushing would look like. However, I did not want that. So I am coating the entire piece until I get to the top. Then I'm kind of dry brushing because I want it to, I want it to look like rust is coming through. Now, here we go. Here's our finishing technique. So for this one, I wanted to try wet distressing. And this is where y'all, I say that the quality of paint DIY versus Waverly is different. When I started wet distressing this, it's beautiful, the texture was coming out, but what was happening, which has happened before, the Waverly paint started smearing. So when I'm wiping it away, the brown is smearing all over the top of the Serenity Blue. It almost was giving it like a, like I put dark wax over it. So you can see the texture, you can see it's beautiful. But the smearing of the brown, like I said, was causing it to almost look like I had put dark wax on there, which I didn't want. I wanted this to be very, very light and airy with the birds, but I was like, you know what? We are going to continue on with it and I am going to see what happens. So I continue to stressing on the top right. And then I go in with the clear wax. And still I'm looking at this and it's just not setting well with me. I'm like, I did not want it like this dark. So you can like see at the top, like how brown the paint looks now. So after I was done, I feel like I'm saying so a lot in this video, my bad. I'm going to take white wax. And I thought this is going to be the way that I lighten my paint back up and make it a little bit brighter. So taking my chippy brush, I'm going to stipple that white paint. I'm putting a pretty healthy coat and then I'm going to wipe it back with my paper towel and look at how gorgeous everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer because I was, this was not like my concept going into it, but I'm so glad it happened because adding that white wax made this piece look so aged and absolutely beautiful. I continue the white wax all the way around and on top, making sure to wipe those birds back and look at, look at, it's just so much brighter. Now for our candelabra, we are doing something a little different. Since we had the rusty look going up on top, I definitely wanted this to look more distressed. So I'm taking my soft grit sanding block and I am just going to sand over that salt wash. And it's gonna give us a different look. It's gonna be a little bit more harsh. There's gonna be more of that brown coming through. And depending on how hard, blah, 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 the pressure you are putting on your sanding block, it can go down to the natural color as well. So there are some spots where like black showing, brown, and then the serenity blue. I'm going to wax this up and I cannot wait to show you how these two different ones turned out. So look at how gorgeous and look at how white the white wax made it bright again. And do you see that texture? This took it from looking like a new Hobby Lobby piece to this vintage, beautiful stone piece that could be like out in your garden. I, I love the look. And then we have this one, which looks a little bit more distressed. I look at, look at that. Doesn't it look all like rusted? That sign behind it's on my website too, if you guys like and then as you carry down you can see it's a little heavier distressed you can see the texture of the salt paint underneath that serenity blue and it is just beautiful tell me which one you like more down in the comments hey everyone dropping in again to say hello i hope you guys are enjoying the video so far i wanted to talk a little bit more about the crafting cousins thrift flip road trip road trip thrift flip um <laughs> Okay, so they're gonna have a playlist. It is linked in my description box. There are other creators that join in on this thrift flip collaboration. So if you are into thrift flips, then make sure how much drink every time I say thrift flip. 
Um, if you are into thrift flips, drink again, then make sure you check out that playlist linked down below. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. This is definitely where my heart is right now is upcycling thrifted finds. And it's also, you guys, a great way to keep things out of the landfills, to give them purpose again. And I love that part of it. And I love that there's so much history in a lot of these things and that you can take something old and bring it back to life. And I love, love, love that. So I hope you guys are enjoying it. My links are all down in the description box for you. I go live at 9 p.m. tonight on Facebook every Thursday. So definitely join me there if you are a Facebook user. And with that said, let's go ahead and hop into the rest of this thrift flip video. All remember this beauty from last week? Yeah we're we're tackling this so i actually left this at the thrift store and then we went back a week later and we saw it again and my husband's like i think you could do something with this so of course i'm like okay <laughs> you talked me into it so it was 4.99 for these sets and i shellacked this before i started painting i am a firm believer in just doing something right the first time because it never fails that when I don't shellac something, then uh, it ruins my paints and my piece is done. So shellacking is a shellac is a stain blocker. Um, I use it on majority of my thrifted projects so that I don't have oils or dirt or tannins come through my paints. All right. So taking that serenity blue, my very fancy chippy brush, I am going to stipple this on to the base of our pitcher and then going on to the pitcher, I do the same thing. Now, I can't get my brush all the way down in this picture. It does not show, like if you're looking at it on a shelf, you cannot tell. Somebody would have to look in this thing to know that it wasn't painted all the way, okay? I, I'm doing my best here. Okay, so I do a messy coat when I initially go into this vase. And then when I go in for that second coat, I stipple it on. And I know a lot of people are probably like, why do you do that? It probably takes more time. And for me, one, it gets into all of the details. And then two, I don't like seeing the brush strokes from the paintbrush on my pieces, especially with something as like beautiful as this. I don't want to see brush strokes. So stippling it, smooth it dries down to like a smoother finish and it almost gives you that look of like a like clay I guess you could say anywho I'm going to take this stencil brush from Dollar Tree because let me tell you these flowers were so detailed not one of them was cracked or chipped either and I am trying my hardest to get up in those flowers and the petals however I wasn't able to cover all the black but that's okay because in the end it created like a shadow effect behind the flowers. So I was all for it. So you could see right here on my second layer of paint, I'm stippling it on. I did not want to see those brush strokes. So I'm going to do a second layer of paint throughout this entire piece. And then uh, I forgot why I made this part of the video so long. So you guys are welcome. You could just spend time with me and watch me paint because I know everybody that watches craft videos loves to watch people paint. Uh, <laughs> that is so not true, said no crafter ever. Um, so after this is dry, after one million years here with me, all right, I am gonna clear the base of this. At first I was like, you're not gonna see the base, so I'm not gonna waste my white wax. So I started with clear. I'm gonna flip this on around and we're gonna grab our white wax. We are gonna use a very healthy coat of the white wax. And I will say, you guys, there is a big difference between the DIY wax and the Waverly waxes. Waverly is gonna have a liquidy consistency. And to be honest, I feel like they should be called like a glaze instead of the wax. DIY waxes are like thick and fluffy and creamy and they wipe back very well. And they are a lot 
less messy than the Waverly waxes. Um, I've had this little container going on a year and a half. So they last a long time. Definitely worth the investment if you wanna get into using waxes. I don't sell a product. My girl Upcycle by Brie does. The link is in the description box. So again, we're taking that paper towel, wiping the excess. You could see how it brings out all of those details around the rim of our base. And then I decide, decided to dust it around the edges on the bottom just because I felt like it showed. We're gonna continue that going up the vase as well. So stippling that on, making sure to get really good into any where like those flowers, that bundle of flowers right there, I really wanted to get the wax in there so it settled into all of the details. And I carried it throughout wiping in sections. If I were to coat the entire picture and then go back, it would have allowed some of that white wax to dry down and it would be a lot harder to wipe away the excess of it. So make sure you're doing it in sections when you're going and doing bigger pieces. So I get as much as I can in the flowers, in the petals, and this took me quite some time to do, but the transformation y'all from that black spray painted picture, you guys, the person that spray painted it didn't even take the tags off. It was so funny, but we took that ugly picture and we gave it beautiful new life. Look at all of those stunning details, those gorgeous roses on the front. Like I said, not even chipped. It is absolutely insane. All right, you guys, I'm going to be on Facebook tonight at 9 p.m. as well as live on YouTube as well doing a thrift haul. So join me then. Okay, so these, we got these at Salvation Army. They were $1.98 each and they were 50% off. So again, sprayed both of these. There are two of them with shellac. I'm going to do a messy coat just to get coverage on it first. I even go over the sawtooth hanger. It'll be fine. I promise. And then we are going to go over a second time. Didn't film that. I think you guys get the point. I'm going to take that white wax again, and I am going to do a heavy focus over the detail in the middle not the outside frame. I'm going to wipe back the access, buff around those edges, and you can see how the wax sits in all the details and makes it pop. Now I'm taking just a light amount of the white wax. This is going to brighten the paint up and you know, everything's going to come together. And this is also going to seal our wall art. So you might as well go around. Now I'm not about wasting my white wax. Okay. So I turn it around and we're going to get the clear wax and we are going to wax the back of it. If you are somebody that wants to get into reselling, make sure you complete the back of your items. For me as a buyer, I know it's something I notice, So I always try to be very aware of that when I am flipping items for resell. I'm going to do the same thing on the second frame. And you guys, what a great way for this entire video of not using transfers, not using molds or stamps, but you're still creating beautiful thrift flips with paint and some wax. And look at how pretty these are. They went from like the dated wine colors and I don't know what I was going to say, but they're beautiful and I love them. They're on my website. So are the trio of these concrete birds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out the playlist link down in the description box today, as well as my website. I appreciate you all for spending your time with me. And she's back with a different outfit. I even changed the, you know, the bottom one this time. <laughs> You're welcome. So many of you guys asked about my bleached flannels. So many of you. And thank you so much for loving this one. I am keeping it myself. I don't know, can you see the back? This one that we did. Um, I will do a bleached flannel video during, I'm so tall and my arms are so long. Look at the sleeves on this thing. Good thing we just rolled them up. Um, I will do a video during summer. Right now it is too cold. I don't have space to do it in my garage. I don't have any lamps to help the heating process and with flannels, since mo majority of them are 100% cotton, you can only leave the bleach on for a limited amount of time. So during the summer or spring, when it starts getting hot and sunny outside, I can definitely do a video of all the different like bleaching techniques I use 
and a lot of what I've learned along the way <laughs> because I've ruined a lot. Okay. Hey guys, I'm back. No, 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 no. All right, you guys, how many times did you have to drink? <laughs> it should be like anytime I say thrift. You guys are welcome. Okay, bye.